Hi, my name is Anshul Malhotra, and in today's vlog discussion, I'm going to be talking about what I learned about in the essay readings from the television section of Reading Pop Culture. And the first one, called Television Addiction is No Mere Metaphor by Robert Kubey and Mihaly C. They use statistics from research studies in order to um, prove their argument about how TV addiction affects our lives. And they use a lot of evidence from observations and results from experiments to talk about how, you know, there's this metaphor between drug addiction and TV addiction. The more we watch TV, the more addicted we get to it and we crave watching certain shows or movies. Um, similar to how when people use drugs, the more they use it, they crave that or they face withdrawals. And in the second essay called Girls, Girls, Girls by Roxane Gay, she talks about the show Girls, um, which is an HBO show, and she basically talks about how it's not very really a relatable show um, because the main character isn't easy for a lot of girls to relate to. And she discusses the way that girls are portrayed in the media and how she would want media to portray us. And she does this by even writing her own show as an example to kind of start off the essay. Um, she also talks about going back to the show Girls, how it doesn't really feel genuine and it feels a little bit the character feels a little bit forced um and she also tries to connect the reader by comparing her own life stories and experiences with the ones shown in the show to kind of further her argument that it's not relatable for a lot of people and in the next essay the apocalyptic strain in popular culture the american nightmare becomes the american dream um author paul Cantor talks about how apocalyptic life shown in certain movies and television reflects our fantasies of what life would be like without all of these institutions such as the government on any level state local um, federal and he also talks about how over time the american dream has changed and turned into more of a nightmare that gives people anxiety when they think about having a picture-perfect life or what they want their life to look like and being able to attain all these things. Um, but we are also able to rethink our definition of the American dream based on our views of social media or just the media and pop culture in general. Um, and it helps us kind of redefine what we want in life and what we crave which a lot of times is a world without these institutions. And in the final essay called Netflix and the Future of Television, um, author Ken Auletta talks about how Netflix has basically changed the entertainment industry over time and has led to the rise in the popularity of streaming. And he uses a lot of statistical evidence to prove his point by bringing up examples about how, you know, before we had blockbusters that would people would go there to rent movies or even red box um and it's very rare like there's no more blockbusters it's rare that you see a red box in grocery stores anymore and netflix and all these other netflix is what started it but then all these other streaming services came along and have taken over because it's convenient for people than having to go out and get a dvd to watch something um, in chapter four of the rhetorical act, um, called, the chapter was called The Resources of Evidence. Um, they started off by talking about how when looking at evidence, there's these two criteria we need to keep an eye out for. The first one being, what are the logical strengths and limitations? And the second one being, what are the psychological powers? Um, and they also talk about how good materials are clear and provide concrete evidence that are backed up. And there's also five categories of evidence. The first one is stories and example, examples. So um, one of the limitations to stories and examples is that in most cases, these stories or examples show that something happened once. So it would be considered a weak form of evidence when being judged logically. However, a pro to this um, type of evidence would be that it's specific and it would help build up the argument. Um, and then the second category of evidence is statistics and data so this is strong evidence when it's being judged logically and when looking at statistics and data before pulling them we have to answer these two questions the first one is what counts as an instance of what is being measured and the second one is how was the whole population sampled to obtain the data 
And the third category of evidence is experts and testimonies. Um, a lot of times these testimonies and expertise can be misused because they can be cited in the wrong context. For example, if the expert has expertise in one subject and they mention something quickly about another subject, someone can pull that and use that. And in fact, it may not be as strong of a piece of evidence because they're not experts in that what they were talking about in those couple sentences. And this evidence is also the strongest when we know the credentials of the authority and we know the relationship between their expertise and the subject that's being discussed. And when we know the details about the data that's being used and whether the conclusions will benefit them. The fourth type of evidence is analogies and comparisons. So there's the uh, comparison of literal analogies versus figurative analogies. Literal, literal analogies are between items that are alike, and these are more so used for evaluation and prediction, whereas figurative analogies are more metaphoric similarity or similarity in principle, and there's really no logical proof for these, so they wouldn't be beneficial in that way. And the last category of evidence is visuals and presentations. Um, so there's the argument of reinforcement versus presentation, basically aid versus rhetoric. The aids help build up our argument, whereas the presentation just guides what we are trying to say and the message we're trying to come across, get across. And visuals are really efficient and emotional form of evidence that helps get our message across faster.